By 1957, over 40 million American families were enjoying a new form of entertainment, television. And Donna and Tony saw an opportunity to make their mark on the small screen. The couple considered sitcom scenarios, ranging from the life of a single secretary to a globe-trotting diplomat's wife, before they stumbled on a theme closer to home. After assembling the ideal American family, on September 24, 1958, the Donna Reed Show premiered. Co-starring Carl Betts as her pediatrician husband, Donna portrayed a loving wife and mother, with Shelley Fabre as her teenage daughter, and Paul Peterson as her mischievous son. Together, they made up the Stone family. The Donna Reed Show was not an overnight success. In fact, the ratings at first were abysmal. Everyone thought the uh, show would fail. In those days, your show was sponsored usually by one entity, and in our case, it was Campbell's Soup. And Campbell's Soup kept us on the air, and the audience had time to grow to know the Stone family and to identify with the individual characters and, and build up what turned out to be a love affair between the audience and the Donna Reed Show. During the second season, the show took off as audiences warmed to Donna Stone's unique blend of strength and sweetness. We were just talking about Donna, and we've all decided she's perfect. Oh, Donna has her faults. See? Tell them, dear. Like what? Well, she uh, can't hit left-handed pitching. <laughs> you should see her with the children. Never raises her voice and never screams at them. Any mother who can get through a day with children without exploding is a saint. Well, of course, I don't believe in screaming. A rubber hose is just as effective, and it doesn't leave any marks. <laughs> you know, uh, you're supposed to earn the money to pay for those refreshments. Your father asked you to wash the car and uh, clean up the leaves in the backyard. I'll do it twice next time. <laughs> Wait a minute. Those leaves are raked. Mm -hmm. Your fairy godmother did it for you. Well, I said you were a doll. I'm all so sweet. <laughs> when I think of what I could have gotten for a mother. The Donna Reed Show was a family sitcom, and instead of being Father Knows Best, it was Mother Knows Best. At the end of 22 and a half minutes, Donna Stone made the statement that put the button on the story. Look, lady, what are you trying to prove? Uh, Mr. Parker, I I'm just trying to prove that you can't use the word housewife as a label. Every woman you call just a housewife is a nurse, a psychologist, a, a diplomat, and a philosopher. Isn't that true, Mr. Parker? Well, yes. Yes, it is. Thank you very much for answering that question. I think America fell in love with Donna Stone because she presented that quintessential loving, beautiful mom who was understanding, who was fun, who was um, available. Is it really necessary to wash the same dish five times? <laughs> uh -huh. What? Let me put it another way. At the rate you're going, you won't be through in time for breakfast. No, I wasn't even thinking. Now, I had the feeling you were. Is there anything you'd care to talk about? By 1961, after three years and 100 episodes, a confident Donna pushed for more unique storylines. There was a segment about interracial marriage, a rather controversial topic. Uh, may I take your wrap? Uh, yes, thank you, Donna. And your coat. <laughs> And they tried things not so controversial, but still new to the small screen. They brought sports figures in, much to Tony's delight, like Willie Mays and Don Drysdale. After several seasons, the cast members that made up the Donna Reed show became a close-knit family themselves. I idolized her as my second mother. I um, listened to her as a mother figure, and I think she really cared about me and loved me as a daughter also. I mean, gosh, she was raising me. At the same time, she was teaching me. At the same time, she was paying me to deliver. And to do all of that gracefully and with style, it's wonderful. Joining the ranks of such celebrated female trailblazers as Lucille Ball and Loretta Young, 
Donna meticulously oversaw every detail of the show's production. She wanted to be more than just the star of the show. She came up with story ideas. She helped decide casting decisions. Today, on a credit, you put her as co-producer. Everybody always talks about Lucy as being the only person who did that, and that, of course, is not true. Donna, in her quiet way, was very much a producer and a writer and a, a real force behind that show. She was that show. A four-time Emmy nominee and a Golden Globe winner, Donna Reed had conquered the world of television. At age 40, she commanded respect both in front of the camera and behind the scenes. Her successful transition from film to television proved she could well adapt to a changing Hollywood. But soon, Donna Reed would face the challenge of a changing America. By 1963, the apple pie innocence depicted on the Donna Reed show belied a swelling tension that was sweeping the nation. President John F. Kennedy was violently assassinated, and Martin Luther King Jr.'s peaceful demonstrators were met with water hoses and brutal beatings. Yet every week, eight million American viewers tuned into the Donna Reed show, firmly embracing the character and family that embodied a happy and secure American home life. It's not like the person she was in that show was really all that terribly different. I mean, she certainly didn't walk around the house in pearls and stuff like that. But she had to run a house, you know, when she came home from this busy schedule. Even when she was home, she was, the wheels were always spinning. She was always thinking about scripts. In 1966, after 274 episodes, ABC and Donna agreed it was time to retire the Donna Reed Show while they were still on top. None of us knew it was coming and suddenly there it was on a Friday morning rehearsal. And for me particularly, it was devastating. And Donna was very sensitive to that. She stayed behind just to, you know, kind of give me hugs because it was tough. Eight years of putting that show together and running it and producing it and everything in it. <laughs> she was tired. She needed a break. After 25 years in show business, Donna now had time to pursue some of her personal interests. Armed with a camera and a fascination with photography, she traveled with a group of friends to India. Mom took some of the most beautiful pictures I've ever seen. I think she was really interested in India and the feeling there and the way it was so completely different from what she knew. Donna had a great eye and she was fascinated by the colors and the the sights. I remember her talking about the devastating poverty and the incredible beauty and the polarity between the two. Donna's experience in India had a profound effect on her and she returned to the United States a more enlightened and concerned citizen. In 1967, she joined the organization Another Mother for Peace, a group opposed to the U.S. involvement in Vietnam. Her real role in that organization was doing the research so that they had their facts, and she just spent hours and hours at libraries and going over documents. It really suited her because she loved to read, and she never had time to read when she was working and she knew a lot about world politics and she was passionate about it and she really felt she could make a difference. 